In the fourth chapter of Ace of the Black Cross, Ernest Udit begins to describe his first duel while fighting for the German Air Army during World War I. The young German pilot had his first confirmed kill March 18, 1916 in Mulhausen, Germany. Unknowingly to him that 62 confirmed kills later, he would hold one of the most admirable flying careers of the 20th century. Ernest Udit's memoir demonstrates how his achievements as a fighter pilot in World War I opened up new opportunities for him to become a celebrity in stunt flying and head of the Technical Office of Air Ministry through the Nazi Party. The collective memory of the First World War is deeply remembered through the experience soldiers shared while fighting endlessly in the trenches, but the military air battles that developed during the course of the war would set the foundations for modern airfare. Udit's experience he faced as a pilot was drastically different from those on the front line. While facing off with multiple enemies at a time, Udit was driven by the thought to shoot down the enemy before he shoots you. Born on April 26, 1896 in Frankfurt, Germany, Ernest Udit's captivation of flight developed when his family moved to Munich at the young age of 13. With his friends from school, in 1909, Udit founded a local model aircraft called the Munich Flying Club. This is a picture of Udit in 1916 when he was 19 years old. That same year, on March 18th, Udit would shoot down his first French opponent, winning him the Iron Cross First Class. Here is an example of the Iron Cross First Class Udit was awarded in 1916. In the evening, we had an opportunity of going over the events of the day. The French air raid, the first big-scale raid in world history, had been beaten off. Five enemy machines had been brought down on our side of the line. Of nine officers from one flight, only three returned in the evening. That was on March 18, 1916. We were young, and victory had to be celebrated. Ernest Udit survived the war as a first lieutenant and was the second most successful German ace of the First World War, after Manfred von Richthofen, also known as the Red Baron. Seen here on the left is Ernest Udit with 62 victories, and to the right is Bruno Lorozer with 44 victories. The date of this photo is unknown. Following his return home after World War I, Udit married his childhood sweetheart, Eleanor Lowe Zink, on February 25, 1920. Pictured here is 22-year-old Udit on vacation with Lowe in 1918. Through his accomplishments as a successful German ace of World War I, Udit was able to open a window of opportunities in post-World War Europe by utilizing his flying skills. This is shown throughout the second half of his memoir as Udit describes how his popularity as a celebrity pilot and contributions to help reconstruct the Luftwaffe adds to the rise of National Socialism in Germany. The adventures of Udit's life continued on after the war, where Udit began to discover a career through stunt flying. Throughout the next years, Udit flew in various aircraft competitions throughout Europe and America. Udit was able to entertain crowds of spectators while flying various machines and performing tricks in the air. One of his favorite crowd-pleasing stunts was to fly very close to the ground, dipping one wing low and snatching a handkerchief from the ground with his wingtip. Flying always remained his greatest passion, but his independent nature and constant travel led to the breakup of his marriage in 1923, leaving him to become a professional stunt flyer. Pictured here is Ernest Udit at the National Air Races in Los Angeles, California. Throughout the 30s, this was the happiest time of Udit's life. In 1935, his autobiography, Mein Flieger Lieben, translated to Ace of the Iron Cross, was a hit, making him a war hero and the most famous stunt pilot of his day. Pictured here is Ernest Udit during his visit in America posed next to the Udit U-12 Flamingo, which also happened to be the aircraft in which Udit demonstrated his crowd-pleasing routines.
This image is a snapshot while Udit performs as admiring young fans look up in amazement. When I arrived in Hollywood, I was quite unknown, at least from the point of view of being famous as a film star. Three days later, however, everyone seemed to know me. I was invited here, invited there, handed round, and interviewed. According to historian Peter Franchi in his book, Nation of Flyers, German Aviation, and the Popular Imagination, Udit was proud of his war service and used his skills to promote German nationalism. Thanks to the air shows, Udit shook off the resentments that consumed many other former aces after the war. And through that, he became one of Germany's most familiar stars. Inside Germany, however, the country was struggling during the Great Depression due to large war debts and a failing economy. These images reflect on the haunting reality people face day to day. As Udit wrote in his memoir, his life as a stunt flyer became difficult for him to survive just as it had been during World War I. That was the way in which we lived. We lived in present from day to day, earning our bread as we went along, and it was not always easy. A canceled exhibition meant no profit that month. A crashed machine meant going short of food. As the war days that seemed so far away, we were still fighting to live. Faced with the decision in 1934, Udit joined the new Luftwaffe under Nazi command. Under the Nazi party, Udit began his challenge of rebuilding the Air Force and promoting overall nationalism in Germany. Udit's overall enthusiasm for Hitler can be found on the last page of his memoir, as he describes how the Luftwaffe had restored his faith as a soldier and in the country of Germany. We are soldiers without a flag. We have now unflared our flag once more. The few are restored it to us. For old soldiers, life is worth living again. Uta became a key figure for Nazi propaganda. Pictured here is Uta examining plans with former First World War commander Hermann Göring in 1941. Göring, now president of the German parliament and air minister, was the man who recruited Udit to join. Göring was also in charge of appointing Udit as the head of technical office in the air ministry, a position in which Udit struggled to fill and no longer felt the thrill of flying that he once enjoyed. He then became dependent on heavy drinking. On November 17, 1941, unable to handle the stress, Udit took his own life. We were soldiers without a flag. The fewer restored it to us. For old soldiers, life is worth living again. Turned out to be a false hope for Udit. On the wall before he died, Udit left a scribbled message for Goring. Iron Man, you have betrayed me. Ernest Udit's memoir, Ace of the Black Cross, captures the feeling young pilots felt as they flew off each day to duel with the enemy. By using his skills as a flyer, Uta also recalls on his experiences after the war where he was able to transform his image as an ace fighter into a celebrity stuntman and to be recruited as the head of technical office in the air ministry. With all his accomplishments in World War I, from being awarded the Iron Cross first class to having 62 confirmed victories, Uta is still remembered to this day as the ace of aces.